We're at Girton College, which was the first institution to offer women the same university education that men could get. And I'm here with Dr Dorothy Thompson. I became a research fellow in 65, a full fellow in 68, um, the year when Muriel Bradbrook became mistress. Bradbrook's particularly interesting partly because she was the first woman to be a professor in the English faculty in Cambridge, but partly simply because she produced this extraordinary board game. It's the career of a female academic. She works on varsity, she does write some essays, she gets kissed under the archway, she gets a small part playing in the Amateur Dramatic Society. She also has a wild social life, so she goes to four May balls. I'm struck at how late writing a book comes along, given how productive she was in her own <laughs> career. She became a really world-renowned Shakespearean scholar. She, she was one of the first to take seriously that you should study Shakespeare as something to be performed, not something simply to be read on the page. That's right. Her students were terrified of her. Really? But she was actually very quiet. She was very motherly once she became a fellow. She put little little Christmas presents in our pigeonhole. If anybody had a book published, she would always give a party. She lived in college all her life when she retired. She described to me, I remember, how she had to learn to open a tin. Like so many academics of that period, she'd never cooked for herself or looked after herself. Because I suspect a modern, updated version of this family life would loom a lot larger. Yes. in thinking about the challenges that women academics face. When I got married, I was told I should plan my children for the long vacation because there was no maternity leave. <laughs> you know, things, things right. have changed in society at yes. large. This academic, she does marry her supervisor, doesn't she, at some yeah. stage? That's before the quads, I'm glad to say. One thing we haven't talked about is whether women of Bradbrook's generation, how aware they were of overt forms of discrimination. I mean, we still have a problem in the university that only a fifth of professors are women. I think a little over a third of university lecturers mm. are women. I mean, was there a sense among this generation of needing to fight against a lot of prejudice and encountering overt discrimination? It's how things were. Mm. I mean, we give it to term overt discrimination now, but that was the world, really. Mm. That was the world we were brought up in. Retiring with a peerage is really being ambitious. Well, I think she was ambitious. Yeah? Yes, I think she was very ambitious. To do what? To achieve what? To achieve within her subject. Right. Um, to be an international figure, which she certainly was, mm. and to make it in Cambridge, which was not an easy place to make it in. <laughs>